Hi, I'm Veronica Vance. Coming up, we have a blast at the Michigan Science Center. Take a tour of Detroit in a whole new way, and then we encounter some unique experiences at the Detroit Zoo, so stay tuned. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com. Hey, guess where I'm at? The Michigan Science Center in downtown Detroit. It's a lot of fun. So this kind of stuff is always fun. See how the flow of electricity happens. Get a little zap. It's like touching lightning in a bottle. Look at that, how I'm controlling it. Isn't that neat? So this is the entrance to the Fun Factory, and it looks hot, and it actually feels hot. This tunnel I'm walking through, and it leads into, well, it looks like an actual factory once you're in here, explaining how all kinds of things work. Again, making science fun. So we see what's behind the wrapping refrigerator. <laughs> Demonstrating all the healthy foods. This whole area in the front is all about nutrition, eating healthy. This looks like a lot of fun for the kids. All those forbidden areas you actually get to participate in. Okay, ready? Oh my goodness, wow. That's kind of disorienting. <laughs> Look at your good hair. Where's your hard hat? So behind me they're doing a show at the Chrysler Center stage and they make it really interactive and they're teaching kids all about physics in a fun way. They're letting them participate. What brought you guys to Michigan Science Center today? Well, I'm from Connecticut and I come visit my friend in Michigan and my niece and her two children come from Illinois to visit here so we wanted to take in some sights. So what do you think about it? I think it's oh, I, wonderful. I think it's phenomenal. It's really, everything is really nice, very educational, very Hands on, the kids can do a lot of stuff. Yes, yeah. you learn so much when you're you doing do. it yourself. We have over 250 hands on exhibits, our live stage shows, including the Toyota Engineering Theater, our we call it our double dome experience with our planetarium and IMAX Dome Theater. Well, can you take me on a tour if we go check it out? Let's go check it out. So Carrie, we're on the lower level and you've got this whole exhibit. What kind of things do you do in this area? This, the lower area of the Science Center is our main floor for our hands-on exhibits. We have the lower portion of our space gallery way over that way because it's two levels. And then we also have our DTE Energy Science Sizzle and Spark exhibits and then also our Waves and Vibrations gallery that has everything that are light exhibits, to the jam, jam room. Jam yes. room, okay, yeah. I Where they get to play guitars there, yeah. and drums. Yeah. We have our stage shows on this area, but the hands-on exhibits, you can go and play and have fun anytime. Well, Carrie, I had some fun here earlier with the zap machines, but tell me what's going on behind me in the theater. This is our DTE Energy Sparks Theater. In the stage show, you get to learn about magnets and then also electricity. It's the stage show that everybody knows about that makes your hair go crazy. Uh -huh. Behind us is the Centennial Lab. What are they doing in there? In the Centennial Lab, we do all all sorts of fun experiments. It changes up weekly when you come into uh, the Science Center. So the great, great thing is, like, especially if you're a member, is mm -hmm. when you come, there's always something new that you can learn. So we're going to walk into this beautiful globe. Looks like yep, this is our luminarium, which is part of the Waves and Vibrations Gallery. Mm -hmm. So this is all talking about how light behaves and colors and that kind like of how you can turn images upside down, how light refracts, and how you can make colors. On the way to Kids Town. Yes, okay. and Kids Town is a special place just for kids that are five and under. And it's, it's all, their own little place where they get to go into a diner, to our center stage area, to going into the Dexter's Library, mm -hmm. and then also Picasso's studio. And then a favorite of mine is the Happy Tales Vet Clinic. The Vet Clinic. Yes. That's with the transplant. I'm not going in there. <laughs> 
because you've got like a real live kitchen right here in the Science Center. Yep, this is one of our many uh, demonstration spaces. It's the Nutrition Kitchen. I'm assuming they're learning how to eat healthy and eat right, right? Everything from eating <laughs> healthy to learning about cells, you name it. So I'm standing in one of the world's perhaps largest IMAX theaters? We, it, Michigan's only IMAX dome theater and also one of the largest movie screens in the state of Michigan. And it's always changing, you've always got new movies coming in. Yep, we well, usually right? have two to three films playing and usually at 11 o'clock on the weekends is when we have our child-friendly shows. This is the Dassault Systems Planetarium and we have three shows. It's a great part Not of your bad. day. yeah. So neat when all the lights go down too. Thanks. Stars come out. So tell me, where are we at now? This is called the... This is our Toyota Engineering Theater. It's a 4D theater. Uh, 4D. Yeah, so it's a, it's a mix of a theatrical show and a ride. As you can see, the seats move, and then they have lots of effects that come out of them. We send them down a whitewater rafting course. Um, we send them to the moon with a lunar rover. And all while they're doing that, they've got water spraying in their face. And things tickling them from behind, and then the seats moving, of course. It just, it's completely immersive. How oh, much fun. <laughs> we are in our small exhibits gallery. It is our temporary space where we have regular exhibits, come, smaller exhibits coming in and changing, and right now we have the special exhibit, Wish Upon a Butterfly. One of the great things that's really cool about this exhibit is you get to feed the butterflies, and what it is is we give you a special nectar solution to put on your fingers, and it totally attracts the butterflies to to your fingers and they use their feet um, as actually the tasters to take for the nectar. So That's once so you have the delicate. nectar on you, you might uh, you might have a friend for life. I do, I think he's my buddy. Well Carrie, this is a lot of fun. I want to thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for coming and checking us out. Yes, and we of course are next to the couch potatoes, <laughs> and these guys are a good example of what you don't want to become, which is why you come to the Michigan Science Center. Let's go. I love it. <laughs>
the D in a totally different way. How's this for a coolness factor? We're gonna tour the D on a Segway. I'm right here on Jefferson in front of the Ren Fen. Come along for the ride. So Segways to you is really easy to find. And right here in the main entrance of the GM lobby, you've got these beautiful glass facades behind me. So you know if you see that, you're in the right spot, right off of Jefferson. We just come up right around here. Segways to you. Let's see. I'm looking for Maureen. Well, hello. There's our segways for me. Absolutely. <laughs> segways to you. To me. Hi, Maureen. I'm so Hi. excited to go out and tour the D on one of these awesome segways. Absolutely. Now, I've never been on one. You're going to give me a little bit of training, right? Sure are. Yep. We give everybody training before we, uh, you know, head, either head out on a tour or give them a, a send off a rental. We send off a rental for like an hourly turn. You're going to tell me all that good stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely. Now, there's two waiting out on the plaza for us, right? Yes. All right. Let's go. So whenever somebody rents them, you always go over a little training session with them, right? Just absolutely. Kinda... <laughs> you absolutely. Don't just say go. No, we don't just let it go. <laughs> on it. So yeah. So let me give you a little training session. All today. right. Tap that surface. Got a little. Yep. Smiley now you guy. got a little smiley face. So you're gonna take whichever foot you want and just center it between the front and the back of the unit. All right. Great. And then go ahead and hold on and just step up with the other foot. Oh, okay. that's easy. Yep. So now it goes left and right with okay. using the handlebar, kind of like a bike. And then to power it, it's my feet then, not... That's right. There's not nothing on the handlebars. Yep. So now you're just going to lean your whole body slightly forward, and that's going to put some pressure on your toes. There you go. <laughs> I'm going. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then... So, oh, so leaning back gets me backwards. So here we go forward. Okay. Yep. So you got to do a little forward, and then you can lean your body back, and that's going to make make it stop and then to turn oh yep. my goodness we do offer tours we do uh, generally they're two hour tours okay um, we have the central business district called the city tour mm -hmm. um, and that takes you around to all the you know major items sure. here on the riverfront General Motors Renaissance Center the stadiums and all that sort of thing campus Martius and then we also do a couple other tours one is the gritty tour which takes you outside yeah <laughs> takes you outside cool. the central business district mm -hmm. we actually take the riverfront and then the de Quinder cut that whole tour focuses on the graffiti uh, efforts that are going on and then actually out to the east side um, to look at some really big installations of some graffiti oh my goodness yeah wow. and then this year we've added a, a midtown tour that one's actually a little bit longer well where should we start? I'll follow you. Okay, we're gonna zip around this way, down the, down the little hill. Down the hill we go, okay. So what a great way too to Come along the river walk, watch the boats go by. Oh there's yeah, Canada. it's beautiful. I yep, it. Canada a, to our there south. There is a steamship right oh, now. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and as you were saying, the only place where Canada, Canada is to the south of the U.S. Uh, they can go 12 and a half miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody asks. <laughs> and then the other question is, uh, uh -huh. how long do they? How long does a battery charge last? Yeah. And that's 24 miles in a go oh, on average. Okay. First time on one right now. He was from her, just in the rent then. <laughs> she keeps getting stopped all the time. I mean, it is really cool to see, to be out on the river walk on a Segway. Everybody keeps stopping you. Where can I get one? <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Gosh, it smells wonderful, all the flowers yeah. along here. Oh, and of course, the Detroit Princess. Even on the uneven ground here, it is super smooth. Yeah, it's still smooth. So, yeah. Hart Plaza has a lot of fun because it has a lot of different surfaces that you can, you know, roll around on. Yeah. Our plaza is basically 
actually our Civic Plaza. Um, it's where we hold our big festivals. Uh, so every Memorial Day uh, Movement Festival, which is the Electronic Music Festival, internationally known. We get a lot of people coming in from, yeah. you know, all over the world. And then at the end of this summer season is the Jazz Festival, which is, is very big. Yeah, it's, you know, it goes all the way from here at Hart Plaza all the way up to Campus Martius. And then throughout the summer, of course, there are festivals. Yep, yep, smaller ethnic festivals yeah. and all just all sorts of stuff that goes on here. Then heading up Woodward here to Campus Martius, this is, you do this on the tour and you kind of, do you recommend this route too to people that are just doing it by the hour as well? We do, yeah. You know, I actually have a map that oh, uh, nice. I give it to people with mm -hmm. the rentals so that they, you know, can see where they want to go if they're, you know, if they're so inclined. Right. It also has little pieces of history and oh, you know, some of the information. Cool. It's it's the tour without me. <laughs> well, it's just beautiful being down here on this and a different way to see campus marshes too, up on a segue. <laughs> Absolutely. So this is the point of origin for the city. Uh, if you've ever wondered what where Eight Mile Road is eight miles from, the answer is right here in the center of the park. And they do concerts and... Yep, concerts. And then of course, even in the winter, this turns into the ice rink right here. Oh yeah. The new Just addition beautiful. this year is actually um, beach volleyball. Oh, here and here's this is going to be volleyball. How fun! Now we've rolled on into Greek Town here, and Greek Town, oddly enough, was originally settled by the Germans. They started moving out about the turn of the century, and then the Greeks started moving in. And now it's just, of course, always a happening place. Now, yep, you know, now it's Greek the entertainment Town. district. Yep. Best restaurant in Detroit. Best restaurant in Detroit, Santorini. No, we have a steak with us. <laughs> All right. Sounds yummy. Thank you. Brick Town. Right here in Brick Town, yeah. <laughs> A little uh, challenging here. Some, you know, sometimes we provide little tests for you. <laughs> and we bring it back to the front of the Rensen. There we what are. What call the football? Yes, the blast football. <laughs> you are an excellent tour guide. I want to thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. And I'm so happy that we have segways in the in the D. And what a great way to come and tour the city. <laughs> There are plenty of things to see and do in Metro Detroit this month, and our calendar of events is up next to point you in the right direction. Catch the Michigan premiere of the Andrew Brothers, then the Detroit Music Awards are in true Grammy style. Have fun seeing how Jacob Jeremy became a pirate, and the U.S. Olympic figure skating team headline stars on ice. Thomas the Tank Engine rolls into Greenfield Village, and the Metro Times Blowout Music Festival is bigger than ever. To learn of any changes, log on to visitdetroit.com or call 1-800-DETROIT. Besides being just a terrific place to visit and spend a day, the Detroit Zoo has two unique exhibits that let you get really up close and personal with the animals. They've got the giraffe encounter, which allows you to actually feed the giraffes out of your own hand, and then they've got the Australian Outback Adventure that lets you walk right through to the kangaroos. Who knows, one may even come up and uh, give you a little peck on the cheek. We're going to check them out. Bob, this is a pretty unique feature you've got here. You get to actually go up and feed the giraffes. Yep, actually this is, we're in our third season now with giraffe, pl giraffe platform feeding. Gives the, uh, the zoo visitor an opportunity to come on up and meet with the keepers and learn a little bit about the history of the animal and kind of get up and up close and uh, kind of an eye to eye view with our giraffe platform feeding. What a, what a neat idea. So now they they pay a little extra to cut, to they issue, they issue tickets uh, twice okay. a day. It's twice so we have a, day. a 11 a.m. feeding and a 1 o'clock feeding. So what kind of things do the giraffes like to eat? Well, up on the platform, we, we give the zoo visitors uh, uh, crackers and, and produce, but mm -hmm. uh, the animals get a, uh, alfalfa and grain and, and a lot of browse to feed on when they're not on the platform. Do we have names for the giraffes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, this is Jabari. He's our one-year-old that came in last year from, from uh, Utah. And oh. uh, Chardo is our female, and she's... Uh, uh, 24 years old. 24. So mm -hmm. what's the average expectancy, life expectancy? Mid to late 20s. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And then who's that back there? Raspberry. He's 17. Raspberry. I like that. Very cute. So is this seasonal or when, when does the draft We start the platform start? feeding usually in May. Okay. And they, and they go through early fall. Early fall. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to feed him. And he, this is uh, mulberry? Mulberry, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a favorite. Hello there. Just going to go for the leaves. Oh, he does pull up. Hello. 
Oh my. Yeah, J Jabari, <laughs> he's uh, he's about uh, 11 feet tall right now. He came to us, he's about nine feet tall, weighs about 700 pounds. When he's done growing, he'll be about 17 feet tall and weigh about 2,500 pounds. Are you one of the first zoos to offer this experience? Not one of the first, but we were basically one of the forerunners for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, we've actually had other institutions come visit us and see what we do. And um, so yeah, we've, we've been pretty much in the front running for this. Yeah. This is nice too, like you were saying, they get to come up and they get to actually talk yeah, to the keepers. You get a chance to meet some of the animal staff, you get the little personal history of the animal itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, you know, if you've got questions Whoa. about the animal, the, the, the keeper can answer those questions for you. So when they're finished, you've got somebody up here snapping yeah, we, yeah, pictures? Yeah, we, we take their pictures and then they, they're given a card and they can collect that picture on their way out after they, after they uh, finish their day at the zoo. That's nice, in so, case yes, you get your yes. camera. You can... Exactly. Fun. It is a lot of fun. It's a, it's a big attraction here at the zoo. Pretty neat experience. You've got something else that's pretty unique. We're going to head over to the outback and we're going to walk among the kangaroos. Walk among kangaroos. So really just around the corner from the giraffe encounter, we've got the Australian outback. Right. We're going to go right through here and be met by one of the zoo volunteers, get kind of the instructions and we'll go right into the exhibit and walk around kangaroos. Right off the bat, we're just walking right into the kangaroo's home. That's correct. And right off the, the beginning here, you can kind of get an idea about how far kangaroos can actually leap. As you can see, a kangaroo can go anywhere up to 27 feet. 27 feet. Have you tried this? I'm not going to embarrass myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did the three feet. You probably do better than I do. So. <laughs> So you've got emus back here. What's the significance of having them in the... Well, this area here has an Australian theme. And so the okay. emu basically is a large flightless bridge we actually find in Australia. Okay, but they're, they're they... They're fenced off. off, fenced right. off. exactly. Okay. Then back here you also have wallabies? Yeah, also in this exhibit you'll find wallabies, which is a close relative of the kangaroo, but a much smaller version. Mm -hmm. And they like to stay along the fence They do the tend to stay back in the shade along the fence line back there. Yeah, so you got to kind of look kind of hard to find them. So we stay right on the path, but you then... Okay, yeah, you follow the path through the mm -hmm. exhibit, and we actually have uh, zoo volunteers that monitor the pathway, so in case a kangaroo should come on the path or cross the path, they make sure that everybody stays safe and that there's no real interaction between the zoo visitor and the animal. If there's a time to see them being more active, what time would that be? Usually early morning is a good time to catch any animal when it's active as the morning, the, the day sun heats up and again they tend to get more relaxed as the day goes on. But usually early morning is a good time to catch them. So now is this exhibit open all year long or is it just seasonal as well? It's closed during the winter time. So we are open every, every, every day except for during the winter. And there now, how many kangaroos are actually in here? We actually have three males and eight females. We noticed that uh, we had a joey in the pouch uh, in December. A joey, that's right, their babies are called joeys. A male kangaroo could be called a buck, but they're also known as boomers or jacks. Yeah, and the true. females can be called a doe or a flyer or a jill. So you've got Jack, Jack and, and Jill in there, that's pretty, that's pretty neat. <laughs> Zookeepers answer your questions along the way. You've also got these little information. We have graphic displays that give you know the zoo visitors some type of education you know about the outback, about Australia in general. Not in just addition to the animals, but again their surroundings. Yeah, like this one right here. These well, the are termite actual mounds? termite mounds right. Exactly. right here. Well, hey Bob, thank you for giving me a tour. My pleasure. Yeah, I'm gonna stick around and see if maybe one of these uh, kangaroos will jump the path. Okay, sounds good. Okay. So these little tidbits of information sprinkled throughout here really give some interesting facts. Like this one right here, it's how the kangaroo got its name. And it says when Australia's first European explorers saw the cave drawings, they asked the Aborigines, who are these animals? And the Aborigines replied, kangaroo. And kangaroo meant, I don't understand you. But then the Europeans took that as that's the name of the animals and that's how they got their name. I just think that's pretty neat. So what did you guys think about the Australian Outback experience? I think it's a great place for the kids to walk through. It's very interactive for them. They can they get right up to the to the kangaroos and the emus, and they can really see. Even a one-year-old is close enough that she can point to all. We actually got to saw um, see the baby, the baby, the baby one, yes. the baby, the Joey. Yeah, the Joey. <laughs> That's what they're called. And did the little ones like it? Did you like it? Yeah. 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 <laughs>
Well, good day from the Outback, and although I didn't get to see any kangaroos hopping over the pass because they're on Siesta, we did get to see two unique exhibits, the Giraffe Encounter and the Australian Outback Adventure. These are two exhibits that truly let you get up close and personal with the animals and two more great reasons to visit the Detroit Zoo. that's our show. Thanks for watching. I'm Veronica Vance. And remember, if you would like more information on any of the places we visited, log on to visitdetroit.com. So until I see you next time, go out and explore on your own and discover the D. To learn about discounts and special offers for featured attractions, plus how to get copies of Visit Detroit magazine, click on visitdetroit.com. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com.